the fourth episode of the official live action adaptation of the critically acclaimed and best selling Naughty Dog video game, The Last of Us is out. The third episode gave us an entirely new point of view of Bill and Frank and how they lived a whole and complete life in Lincoln. But in this episode, we are back in action with Joel and Ellie on their way to Wyoming searching for Tommy. We will talk about the episode, try to explain the ending, discuss all the easter eggs and predict the next episode but before that let me give you an overview of the HBO Max series so far. Anyway if you don't want exposure to any important plot points and character details from the episode and the video game, I suggest you watch the episode first and then check out this video. So with a major spoiler warning, let's jump straight into the video. After Tace's sacrifice to save Joel and Ellie, we see the entire journey of Bill and Frank's life after the outbreak inside their makeshift castle in Lincoln. And as Bill and Frank commit a peaceful suicide to be together forever, Joel and Ellie reach there and get their hands on the huge inheritance that Bill and Frank left for them. After taking Bill's truck, they left to find Tom. The episode is called Please Hold My Hand which is a line of the song by Hank Williams that Ellie finds in the car. The actual song is called Alone and Forsaken. This scene and the dialogues are almost identical to the video game. Here, this make you all nostalgic? Here, this make you all nostalgic? That is actually before my time. This is actually before my time. The song's lyrics are a metaphor for the developing relationship between Joel and Ellie and how after losing their loved ones, both of them need each other to survive in the world. We see them opening up a little every day in front of each other. The episode begins with Ellie checking out her newly acquired gun from Bill's place like Travis Bickle from Taxi Driver. When she comes out of the broken down gas station, she tries to have a conversation with Joel and shows him her favorite book of puns. Livingstone's Book of Puns can also be found in the game Last of Us Left Behind and is a reference to Riley. In the game, Ellie and Riley found this book of dad humor called No Puns Intended 2 with double O when they were visiting the amusement park. The dirty picture magazine that Ellie found inside the car is also directly taken from the video game even down to the dialogue of this scene. Light on the reading but it has some interesting pictures. Light on the reading, but it's got some interesting photos. No, no, no. Put that back. That's not for kids, How Ellie. How do you even walk around with that thing? No, Ellie, that ain't for oh, kids. Whoa! How How the hell would you even walk around with that thing? Get rid, Please get rid of it. Hold your horses. I want to see what all the fuss is about. Get rid of that. No, hold Just... your horses. I want to see what all the fuss is about. Anyway, after resuming their journey, they teach the woods to take a rest for the night, and Ellie tells Joe some more dad jokes. Why did the scarecrow get an award? Because he was outstanding in his field. <laughs> you dick! Joel explains how this area is remote even for the outbreak, thus the main danger here is not the infected, but the radars or scavengers. Later in the episode, we learn that the reason Joel knows so much about their motives is that he used to be one of them. In the morning, they resume their journey and reach Kansas City, which was originally Pittsburgh, Philadelphia in the video game. While driving the car, they talk a lot about how after the outbreak, Joel joined one of the hunters groups to be with his brother Tommy. Joel calls his brother Tommy a joiner who volunteered for the army in Operation Desert Storm. If you can recall, we theorized this possibility in the first episode's breakdown. You can check the video by clicking the i button. Anyway, after becoming a firefly, Joel lets him go on his own. On their way to Kansas, we see monumental pieces now completely broken down and nature started taking over them. We also get to see a bunch of bisons and cross our broken down RV site, which is a nod to Bill's dialogue in the third episode. But it is going to show up here looking for a free lunch. And this is not an Arby's. The showrunners of the game are taking a bit of creative liberty to tell a better story and so far in the series we don't have anything to complain about. Upon reaching there, Joel asks Ellie to read the map but as this is her first time outside the QZ, she doesn't know how to read it. In the game too, we saw them getting stuck in the road by abandoned cars after reaching Pittsburgh. Then they found the QZ of the area but they could not find any Fedra agent there. This makes Joel suspicious and when we see a man on the road asking for their help, Joel tries to run him over as he sniffs a trap. This scene is directly taken from the video game and the group uses this method to attack unsuspected visitors. They call the visitors tourists and they prey on their goodwill and supplies. 
the hunters also believe in shooting first and asking questions later a philosophy like the federal officials and the previous government who killed innocent civilians suspecting the infection or not having enough space inside a QC. The group is trying to seize the supplies Joel and Ellie are carrying with them. We also get a glimpse of this trap as their car runs through a spike strip and the punctured car crashes into a building. Joel gets down and fights them when a young boy tries to kill him. In the game, they encounter him in a hotel lobby, but the makers use that lobby sequence in the second episode. And instead of trying to drown him like in the video game, the boy tries to choke him to death. But in both cases, Ellie saves his life and Joel starts to trust her. Ellie uses a gun in the scene that she stole from Bill's place, but in the game it was given to her by Joel from a dead hunter. In this scene, the boy asks for his mother after he gets shot by Ellie, but Joel does not let her kill him and finishes the job himself by stabbing him with his own knife. Joel discusses what happened with Ellie later in the episode, concerned that the girl might have been harmed by nearly killing a guy. But Ellie admits to Joel that even if the attacker had perished, he wouldn't have been her first victim. Ellie was probably talking about Riley, whom she had to kill as she became infected. She also tells Joel that she learned to use the gun in federal school. Even if the world of The Last of Us is brutal, learning that a 14-year-old girl has already killed someone is distressing. It's obvious that The Last of Us aims to continue delving into Ellie's dark side, especially given that episode 4 closes with the introduction of a new child exactly like Ellie was introduced in the beginning of the episode holding a gun and who may have had a different kind of upbringing. Then we get to see Kathleen, played by Melanie Linsky, pointing a gun at a doctor. She is a character that was not introduced in the video game and is completely non canon We see her asking about Henry's whereabouts, an ex federal agent who is wreaking havoc in their city. When she gets called outside, she finds her son has been killed and she suspects that it is Henry or his associates who got called in to help them escape. She goes straight to the imprisoned doctor and shoots him down as her son cannot be saved now. She then informs her team to search for Henry and his collaborators and inside an attic, they find a temporary camp of theirs with superhero paintings stuck all around. In the back door of the building, we can see the ground crumbling, which in my guess is a signal transmission of the fungus, or this sounds like a bloater's cry, so fingers crossed if that is coming our way on the next episode. But a cautious Catlin chose to hide this information from her people that could deviate them from their mission at hand. We also see some similar vehicles from the video game, like this one that has run written on its frontal blade. When Joel and Ellie start searching for a shelter, they ascend to a hopping 33 floors of the skyscraper to get to safety. While taking the steps, Ellie asks Joel if he had to kill anyone innocent before as he used to be a hunter. Did you kill innocent people? To which Joel does not reply anything. They make their bed and set up booby traps and with another Ellie's PJs, they call it a night. Did you know diarrhea is hereditary? What? Yeah. It runs in your jeans. But when Joel wakes up, he finds her at a gunpoint of a stranger and a kid. They are Henry and Sam and will play major roles in the upcoming episodes. Sam has face painted himself to look like his favorite superhero whose picture we saw in the previous shelter and Henry is an ex federal agent who can go to any lengths to protect his brother. In episode 5, the duo will probably come face to face with the hunters as they try to escape Kansas and they will probably get help from the brothers Henry and Sam who will play a crucial part in the upcoming episode. It will be interesting to see how different parts of the country are fighting the epidemic but one thing I'm pretty sure about is that there will be some major events happening in Kansas and not necessarily good. Telling you anything more than that might function as a direct spoiler to the video game so I'd like to avoid that possibility. The next episode will be released on February 12, 2023. Hey, 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 thank you for watching this video. Do share your thoughts in the comment section about your experience of watching the fourth episode of The Last of Us. Press the like button and subscribe to our channel to get your weekly dose of this HBO series. See you at the next one. And for the time being, we are signing off. Love this video. Why are all the pages stuck together? And I'll be back.